So they, they had a set of fields. They had three of them in the outfield at one time last year. So they're fine. Yeah, so they, they, so they trade bets and trade both of them. Like I said, I think they'll trade bets for Harvey. I don't know how to get both of them out of the deal. But. Now they got to turn the radio down. Let's see who happens to show up today. Good afternoon, guys. Going to wait for some folks to jump on, but that's not my style. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. And if you happen to be watching on replay, that's fine. Um, school day just ended, and I happened to be riding, and I realized that I hadn't scoped in a little while, and I just was thinking, and I had pulled over, and you know. The Lord placed something on my spirit, or you know, we have these revelations, and it's interesting that if you're honest with yourself, hey guys, thank you for joining. If you're honest with yourself, you will start to understand that you have particular talents. The real question becomes are you going to be brave enough? to explore those talents because often we have erected lives based on money, based on need, based on whatever, and our godly talents would provide us with what we need, but it may mean leaving a comfort zone, and many of us are scared to leave that comfort zone because of the unknown, but yet we talk about faith. And faith is the belief in things not known. So, it's to me interesting that I talk to people, and when you're trying to tell them what you see in them, the talents that you see, or even compliment it on just how well they do certain things, and you might even say, well, how come you've never thought about doing X, Y, and Z? They automatically give you like a thousand different reasons, excuses, instead of saying, you know what, maybe I should consider that. I am as guilty as anybody else. Hey, how you doing, love? How are you? And I'm realizing that I think since May, I had a, an epiphany, if you want to call it that. But yeah, it was an epiphany. And I realized in May, I had been keeping myself from the levels that I should be on. I have kept myself at lesser levels <clears throat> because it was easier. Hence, my comfort zone expanded, and I started inviting people in like it was an apartment, and we all got comfortable together. So the people that were coming into my lives, into my life, excuse me, were only expanding the comfort zone that I had, and exactly right. But what I realized that my happiness wasn't matching my comfort. Thank you so much. Time to get uncomfortable, because that's exactly what I'm getting to. So in May, <clears throat> I realized it was time to not only use these talents that God has given me, but to move to a level that I haven't been to and shake loose anybody who cannot assist me in getting, staying, or surpassing the levels that I'm trying to get to. But the very first thing that had to happen was taking a look in the mirror and being brutally honest with myself and the use of my talents, not acknowledging my talents. I knew I had talents, but acknowledging my misuse because God gives us more than enough. Oh God, does he? We mishandle, we misuse, and some of us just outright ignore because we don't want the responsibility that comes from putting those talents into motion into the world. Some of us don't want to deal with the negative blowback that's going to come from the change that we're going to make. Some of us don't want to deal with the responsibility that the new level, new situation, new... <sighs> everything is going to bring into our lives. 
Thank you for the heart. Some of us don't want new environments, new friends, new associates. <clears throat> we want what's worked. Some of us don't want to leave the area that we live in. So in knowing that in exercising your talent, it may take you out of the area that you live in. So some of us don't want new environments. Well, since May, I have been working opposite all of that. It's why I'm returning to school. It's why I actually allowed a friend who was a, a, a coach um, who reached out from Europe. Shout out to my partner, Brian. He reached out from something that he saw me write on my blog and offered to assist me. The old me would have said, no, nah, I'm good. I'll take care of it myself. That's was the old me. Because what I realized is that if I had been taking care of myself, I wouldn't have wrote on my blog what I wrote. And to anybody watching, whether you're watching live or watching the replay, please pay attention to the things that you say randomly about yourself. Please pay attention to the things that you write on blogs and on your statuses when you're in the midst of your emotions. Sometimes they're more telling than you realize. So when he reached out and said, why don't you let me offer my coaching talents to assist you? And I said, sure, no problem. And I think we have spoken every couple of weeks since the end of May. And I have to honestly say it has been tremendously helpful because it's not like he's rewiring my brain. So I don't want you to think I'm being brainwashed. What he's doing is pointing out things that he hears me say. And then questions things that he sees me do. And then in the midst of the conversation, I actually can start to put pieces together and go, wow, I wasn't thinking like that. Now I'm stronger within my own thoughts. I also realized certain groups of people, not only had I separated from them, I can't be bothered with them. Because to get myself to the levels that I want as an author, the levels that I want to get to as an educator, I had to leave a lot of things behind me. I also had to make some changes to my business because I realized that I had put certain things in place that was easy to do and erected a business around it. So people will say, wow, you're successful. You published or helped publish 17 books and three of your own. Yeah, but if my talent was up here, and that's just a small amount of the use of my talent, I'm still failing. And so now I'm going full bore at being a better me. Grad school starts in January. I'm leaving New York at the end of June. And I am working on being, yes, yes, yes. I am working on being the better me now. I'm not waiting until I move to go, well, when I get to Delaware, I'll do, no. I'm working on it now. Oh, when I start grad school, I'll figure out, no. I'm doing it now. I'm allowing what I think to happen now. See, we could all say what we're gonna do tomorrow. I am allowing my talents to be used in the creative fashion to assist those to be better at whatever they're gonna be. And I'm using the God-given talents that I have. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Activate your gifts. Great point. I am using the God-given talents because to me, and I wrote this and I had to go back. And I, when I read it, I was kind of blown away. I said, wow, I couldn't even believe I wrote it. And I forgot about it. And I said, when you fail to use the talents that God has given you, you are doing the devil's work for him. Let me say that again. When you are not using the talents that God has given you, you are doing the devil's work for him. Because you, your talents were given to you not only to help you take care of you, but to help you take care of others. And you have no idea that something that you may put into motion may activate another chain reaction that saves even more lives than you can even fathom. So I just decided it was time. Now, I've had people go, do you have to move so far? Yes. Do you have to quit teaching now? Yes. But what are you going to do when you get to Delaware? I'll let God 
guide me. I'll have everything in place. Family will have somewhere to lay their heads. And I'll go from there. And this is what it is. Thank you so much, darling. You have to come out to come up, but you also have to expose <clears throat> yourself to the world to come up. Because it's like, and for my my folks who read their scriptures, when Elijah was in the cave worried about Jezebel, he totally forgot that not too long ago, he just destroyed 800 of the enemy in God's name. So why are you hiding in the cave over one woman? Because she killed other men like you? So what? And one of the first things God asked him, why are you in this cave? And many of us are in that same cave, scared to use the talents that we have because we don't want to move ourselves out of the comfort zone that we have. We're scared to say no. We're scared to say yes. So we get up and methodically do the same things daily. Scared to take chances. Scared to fail. Hell, many of us are scared to be successful. You're welcome, darling. I listen. God put this on right now for you, I guess. There it is. And that's what I'm talking about. When we withhold things that's on our spirit, when we withhold things that's in our thoughts, you're withholding something that might be the peace to somebody else changing this world. And if you know everything that's going on in your circles and on your levels, why would you want to stay there? And, and I've been really, really thinking about that. And so today when I was driving and I pulled over, I said, you know, I haven't scoped in a while. And I try not to come on unless I have something to really say. I just don't want to waste anybody's time who may be seeing this. So I really try to come on when I have something to say. But it was very strong in my, in my being today to get on right here, right now. Because I'm doing the planning now. That's the other part of this to anybody watching. And again, anybody that watches on replay, do not say, well, when I get paid on Friday, I'm going to do start doing whatever now. Oh, when I graduate, I'm going to start doing it now. There's research that you can do now. There's people that you can connect with now. Thank you so much, Don. I really do appreciate that. That makes my day. Both of you. Thank you so much, Lady E. Start now. And the, the crazy part about starting now is as you start, the Lord is going to lay breadcrumbs out in front of you just to let you know, got you. I see you. He may not give it all to you right away. First of all, what father, what father or mother would give their child everything? No father or mother would. What they're going to do is lead you. I'll assist you to go to college. I'll lead you to do different things. I'll assist you in looking for work. I'll assist you in moving. But if they did it all for you, there's some things you need to learn during along the way. There's some steps that you need to go through. There's some failures you need to experience to make you stronger. There's some setbacks. <laughs> There's some setbacks that you have to absorb so your skin gets tougher. Necessary failures. That is a great word. I'm going to fold that one away. Necessary failures. We tend to want to avoid pain. All humans do. No one wants to hurt. But necessary failures is going to mean necessary pain. And it's funny because when you hear the term, that which does not kill you makes you stronger. It never says that that makes you hurt. <laughs> it says that that doesn't kill you. Which means you could be in tremendous pain, but if you overcome it, tough. You become tough, battle tested. That is what most parents are trying to get across to their kids when they say, if you only knew what I knew. When you understand what it is, we always say to our children, when you understand what it is to be a parent, and many of us, the smart ones, actually call up our parents if we still have them and go, you were so right. Because I'm about to kill this boy or I'm about to kill this child. <laughs> but that's part of it. And whether you believe in God or not, you still have talents. 
So whether you rocking with what I believe and say, I don't care, this is God thing. Okay, you don't have to believe in God. My faith I wear around my neck just as an outwardly display. But my inwardly display is based on faith. And you may say, but you can't see. That's what faith is. I'm not worried about what I can't see. I know what I feel. And I know what I believe. And I don't ask anybody else. Yes. Yes, you are built for this journey. That is an outstanding point. We all are. The question is, do you believe it? And I believe that you do. And if you believe that you are, then get them. Get them. There's nothing stopping you from taking whatever it is that you want in this world. Now, I'm not saying taking in a negative way. Don't get me wrong. Don't go out and just snatch nobody's stuff. I ain't trying to see nobody locked up. I like you enjoying my scopes here. Don't let me get locked up. But when I say take, I mean get it today. Do it today. Go after it today. And trust that God gave you the ability to get whatever it is that you believe that you want. Now, other people ain't going to believe it. <clears throat> other people are going to give you every excuse in the world. And I'll give you a perfect, perfect example. When I say I'm stepping out on faith and moving to Delaware, people automatically bring up money. But how are you going to, how are you going to do this? And how are you going to do that? And what about your pension? And aren't you only six or eight years away from retiring? So, who said I was going to not work when I got to Delaware? I'm just not sure where yet. But what they seem to forget or fail to remember, I am an independent author. I own my own company. If I have to, I will stand out on a corner with a big sign. I want to say that. Curse. And I will say on that sign, please buy these books so I don't have to commit crimes. <laughs> and if I have to, I will hustle all day to make sure that my family is taken care of. So they never seem to factor that in when they ask me, how are you going to make this move? Why not make this move? I am a salesman. I have my own book. So if push comes to shove, I'll be out there every night. And if nothing else, somebody will say, yo, he's out here every night, every night. If that's what it comes down to. But fear can't be the reason why I don't go. If you tell me don't go because a particular area has some type of toxic situation, okay, we can talk. If you tell me don't go because there's a risk to my life, my family's life or something like that, okay, maybe. But it can't be money. Faith without works is. Go ahead and type it in. What is faith without works? You and I both know. And it doesn't actually say which type of death. Could be social. Financial. Could be spiritual death. And of course could be physical death. But you're supposed to face it all bravely. And trust that the Lord gave you everything you need. Stop saying the Lord's not done with me yet. No, the Lord is waiting on you to see what you're going to do. He gave you everything you need. The question is, and I'll go back to what I said earlier, are you using your talents or are you just doing whatever? You've got to put your hands in something. But the first thing you have to do is connect your heart to it. Because you won't put your hands on it if your heart's not there. We are fully equipped, armed and ready. The question is, are you brave enough? See, I listen to a lot of people chat. I love when the kids say, you chatting. Because I love that. It's true. You chatting. Because you're not doing nothing. I see some authors who's pimping the same book they had when I first came into the game in 07 and 08. I see some of the authors saying the same thing and doing the same things I saw in 07 and 08 when I came in and didn't even know who they were. But you chatting. But you telling everybody you whatever. Why? Mediums change, things change. God gave you talent. There's no reason why you should ever stay in the same place. And don't get it twisted. God moved families all over the Bible. Very rarely did you were born, live, and died in the same place. If you read the stories from the Bible, we got complacent. Well, I'm not complacent anymore. As of May 2015. 
I decided my life is going to move into a place that I have no idea what the outcome is going to be. You know them by their fruit, no doubt. Always. But I decided May, sitting in my classroom under some real duress. That's it. It's time. And I had no exactly, I had no idea exactly what the end goal was going to be. I just knew changes needed to be made. So I started on those changes and those changes are slowly in place. And let me tell you something, there's no better feeling than when I see my wife looking at floor plans to the future home we're going to own and not hoping we own, knowing that when we make this move and the next move, that house will be there. And I told her it will be because that's one of the things that I'm moving to do. Not, well, I think, I know. And I'll make sure that we move into that home because that's part of what I'm moving to do. No more speaking softly, no more speaking weakly, no one, no more acting as if the God that we serve didn't give us enough to take care of that. No. So again, if you're watching on replay, understand you have talents. And if you don't know your talents, take a step back. Think of things that you can do without even thinking about it. And if you're still not sure of your talents, maybe start going out here and trying to help others. Maybe start getting out here and doing things that have nothing to do with you and let other people start to tell you what they see in you to the positive. And you'll start to understand your talents. I've been a leader and a speaker and teacher since as long as I can remember. So I'm not shocked when I tell people I'm leaving teaching, they lose their mind. I didn't say I wasn't going to teach. I don't know what I'm going to do. I've already been given some information about a, a principal's position in Philly. And Philly wasn't even on the radar, but it's close enough to me to actually get to from where I might be in Delaware. So it's a consideration. So I'm checking into it. And me, a principal, is something I said I would never do. But you know what the funny thing about man when he says never? God laughs. Never? You think so? Okay. Men plan, God laughs. Because when God says go, <laughs> you're going to go. And if you choose not to go, then you have no idea what you're missing out on. I made the decision to be a professional speaker. I was already doing it, but now it's a matter of putting those things into place. So... I'll be in South Carolina in February. I'll be in Napa Valley, California. I'll be in South Carolina. Yeah, I'll be in South Carolina in February. Napa Valley, California in February. New Jersey in March. And I got a church that I'm supposed to, I think it's April. So I'm working on my 2016. Um, if Virginia, if you give me some information, I tell you what. Main office, main office at bravenpublishing.com. M A, well, main office at B-R-A-V-I-N publishing.com. Just send me the names and locations of a couple of different churches or faith-based organizations or some schools that would love to have me come and I will send out some information and see if they want me to come and speak. I speak to kids, I speak to young adults and I speak to older adults because too often in our ministries, we target the kids, we target the teens, we target the young adults. We forget to target the older adults to get them to fix some of their wrongs and start laying down the foundation for some of these young folks to cross these bridges. Yes, oh, and that's that's one of my biggest things of getting the men right is that I let men hear my testimony. I let men know I was a misogynistic whore. I was as bad and as negative as a man could be. But it was God and my wife that changed my life. At a motel, not a well, motel, hotel some 200 miles away from my wife when or girlfriend at the time and I should have been home but instead I'm waiting out on a woman that I had already got caught cheating with some time before that why was I there because I was unhappy with me why was I there because I hadn't matured enough to understand that when God blesses you with someone that is about you you don't need anything else and I talk about the, the, the testimony and I talk about everything in my book from Jigolo to Jesus because when I wrote it it was with the understanding that when I put this in somebody's hands, I want them to see themselves. I want them to understand that my testimony is the same as anybody else's who went from dark to light. 
now I'm focused on going out more and talking. My new book, Lukewarm Saint, is the same thing. It's a fictional tale, but it explains making choices. What do you do when you're torn between the things that you love to do and what you know is right? Something that all of us deal with or have had or have dealt with. Many of us know that there's things that we're doing right now that we know is 100% wrong in the eyes of the Lord. But yet we do it because we gain pleasure from it. We gain money from it. We gain prestige from it. And some of us are torn because then we stand in church on Sunday and we cry and the, and the tears stream and our hearts are open. Well, our hearts open because we know we're wrong. But it's time to fix that. And the way we fix that is those of us who are who have a better handle on it. None of us are perfect. <laughs> None of us. But those of us that have a better handle on it have to go back and reach out to those that are fighting and say, look, this is what prosperity looks like. This is what peace of mind looks like and feels like. This is what it's like when you come home and it's just your wife and daughter. This is what it's like when you're with somebody and you ain't got to worry about getting age. You ain't got to worry about a condom breaking because you don't know what she into or what he into. You ain't got to worry about laying down and going to sleep and somebody trying to take your wallet out your pocket, all of that foolishness. And that's what God meant about his yoke being easy. That's why if we would just rely on our talents, our talents take us to places. And I, and I tell folks, and this is another thing too, pay attention to people who have went through bitter trials, who have went through negative situations to get to the level that they were trying to get to a level that they didn't even think they could listen to their reflections the, the ones who are humble will say I know it is not me because they can't believe it what they knew is that they had to get through the negative they had to get away from certain comforts they had to get away from certain negatives and they had to rely on whatever God gave them to get through and we hear all of this, but yet we don't push ourselves to be greater. Well, I'm using myself as an example. And I'm trying to show that the fruits on my tree are ripe and rich. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. But definitely send me the email, main office at bravenpublishing.com because I'm sending out press kits. I'm sending out different things to different folks because I definitely, oh yeah, I know, oh, I know, I, listen, I know. And, and I congratulate you because <laughs> he beams when he's speaking to me about you. And uh, I, it's happy to see him so happy. And just congratulations to you for being such a strong woman in his life. And the funny thing, and I know he said this before, him and I sat in a bar some 12, maybe 12 years now, 13 years maybe now. Um, let's see, I left the game in 06. So yeah, 05 or 04. So it's got to be about some 11, 12 years now. And we both talked about other levels from where we were. And we both realized that the philandering and the misogynistic behavior, there was no future in it. And for me, I was at the tail end of a run of misogyny that I was just eating myself up. So when him and I were speaking, and I, I don't think he was ever on the nasty level that I was on, but we all have our skeletons, we all have our, our bones. But the good thing about it is to see where the Lord is taking him and bringing you into his life and the Lord reconnecting me with my fiance, now wife, because I almost gave her away because of chicks in the street. So yes, I definitely know who you are and I definitely root for you and pray for you and wish you to the best and nothing but the best. But I definitely look forward to coming to Virginia. I have friends and family in Virginia and I would love to come and speak to whoever because this is what I'm about going forward. So my hope to anybody that has stayed on this long and watched the replay that you take into consideration that your comfort zone is actually a zone that will stifle your growth. It will choke out your happiness. Yes, ignorance is bliss. But do you want to wake up someday and realize that you wasted 10, 15, 20, 25 or more years on a level when you could have been at a higher level and struggled at one level when you could have been at a different level doing different things? 
and trust that you have real talents, beauty, physical talents, whatever. There's talents that you have that were gifted just for you to be able to take care of you. And you can't look at others to find your talents. You can't look at how successful somebody else has been in one area and say, I can do that. No, look at what you do well. Look at what you do well and focus in on that. I speak well. I'm working on becoming a better writer. I think I write okay. I've gotten some great compliments, but I'm working on becoming even better. But it took me a while to realize that my ministry is getting people to think. It has been for some time. But I was avoiding the Lord because I didn't want the responsibility that came with the ministry of teaching. That came with the ministry of application. I didn't want the responsibility that if I say to somebody, I'll show you how to apply scripture, that I now have to be responsible for what I gave them. I just wanted what I wanted. I was as selfish and as spoiled as most children. But at some point you grow up. And at some point you mature. And at some point you fall on your knees and thank the Lord for allowing you to live long enough to understand how stupid you were. And then you owe. Because that's how I feel. I feel I owe. I owe. I don't even know how to start figuring out who I owe. But I owe the Lord first. Because I could have died a long time ago. I could have had AIDS and everything else. And if you didn't learn anything else from the Charlie Sheen admission, your money, your prestige, your fame means nothing when you laying down with whoever. So no, there'll be no press conferences of KL saying, I want to announce to the world I, I have HIV. There'll be a press conference saying KL has just opened up. <laughs> yes, yeah, so grateful for the blood. There'll be a press conference saying KL has just opened up a new building for wayward women or a new building for wayward young men or a new school for men and women for free or something like that. But I owe. I owe tremendously. If you've ever if you've ever read my book from Gigolo to Jesus and looked at how I live my life, you will understand when I say I owe. I can't go back and give all those women back what I took. But what I can do is try to protect women going forward from men like I used to be. Pointing out things that they need to see and hear. Be that to young men and young women what I didn't have when I was younger. I still have my father and me and him reconnecting. I can go back and try to solve that problem for young men like I was who didn't have answers. Who didn't have guidance. To young women who don't have fathers who I can be that without them worrying about someone taking advantage of them. No, I'm not the dirty uncle. And no, I'm not the guy who runs the youth program who's trying to touch your child. No, I'm a straight man who wants to see women and men grow up to whatever they're gonna be. And whatever choices they wanna make, I wanna be able to help them get there to make those choices. Because I'm committed to something greater than man himself. And many may not understand that, but those that do understand what kingdom building is really all about. So, if you have watched on replay and love, you keep taking care of that young man. He is gleaming about you, and I can't wait until we meet. But definitely hit me up. My name is K.L. Belvin. I am an author, publisher, speaker, mentor, loving husband, father, and man of God, if you have not figured out. I know you will. You can, I know you will. Congrats on everything. If you need to reach me, you can reach me at main office at bravenpublishing.com. That is main office at B R A V I N publishing.com. Bravenpublishing.com. My website is www.bravenpublishing.com. Our office number is on the website. I always forget it. I ain't even gonna lie. So if you go to the website, it's www.bravenpublishing.com. Dot com. Our office voicemail number is there. Call, leave me a message. We can definitely set something up. And I want to say this about anyone that's watching on replay when we get together and speak. Do not worry about the honorariums. Do not worry about, oh, what is he going to charge? Let's just sit down and talk. We will figure out the details of everything after the fact. It is more about helping and serving than it is trying to hold you hostage by your wallet. I am not that dude. 
Let's just sit down and we'll figure out what professionally can be done and what can be given, whether it's through books, through payments, whatever. I am always open to sit and work with the organization because it is more about my service than it is about just what you're going to pay me. But I am professional, so there's a payment that we have to try to figure out, but I'll work with you. Because if you really want to save some lives, then you call me. We'll figure something out. I am on most all social networks, Facebook, Arthur K.L. Belvin, Google Plus, Arthur K.L. Belvin, Twitter, K.L. Belvin. I'm on Tumblr. I don't, I don't use it. I just kind of, but I have stuff there on Tumblr too. But um, you can always do a Google search to see more of what I do. My YouTube page is K.L. Belvin. Also, all of my um, periscopes go there as well as on Catch um, and as well as other videos that I've done in the past. So if you want to go check those out, feel free. And like I said, please reach out. And all you have to do is send me the information of where you are in the country, where you are in the world, and we'll work something out. Because that is something I am doing going forward. I go back to school in January to work on my degree in ministry slash counseling. And my ministry is one of teaching and application. It is helping folks apply what the word says in their daily lives and how they live and what they do. It is not the thunderous profiting preaching that many do. And I have no knock against that. It's just not my thing. My thing is let's sit down and work a game plan on how you can go out and live the best life spiritually that you can. That lines you up with what God expects from you. So it is what it is. That's my part of the fivefold ministry that I do. So anyway, guys, I wish you well. Wish you pleasant success. I pray that the Lord continues to bless you. And I will see you the next time I come on. When? I do not know. I don't set a time for my scopes because it is when the Spirit moves me. I jump on. So I look forward to hearing from you. Please follow up.